manually timing races in a period of social distancing can be very difficult, if not impossible, if you're uh, depending on what system or what method you use. So obviously the requirements now may have you starting teams at a time or one team at a time or even one person at a time. So uh, I've had requests from people asking, how can you handle that in the system? Which of course, experienced users already know how to do, but even some experienced users have asked, hey, um, you know, can you show me all the different ways, all the different types of events we can have? Uh, and also there's been a couple of requests for features I've added. I want to show, go and show off today. So in this video, I've actually tried to record this video for the last couple of hours and the video ended up being too long. So I'm going to break the video up. Uh, starting with this video is going to cover the most common setup, which is you're going to have enough equipment to capture a chip start and a chip finish. Now I'll do another video, which I'll put in the description below in the video. Uh, I'll probably make it a private video, but you know, obviously make the links where you can jump to it. Where what if you want to time a race and you don't have any equipment at all? You just got two laptops. Maybe you're a person that usually manually times a race and is small enough to where it's not a big deal to manually put in a bib number when it starts or a group of bib numbers when they start. If your race is like 150 people for a 5k or less, uh, manually timing is not that big a deal. So. Um, you know, in those types of situations, it's, it's, you know, just watch the video below and I'll show you what to do if you, if you don't have any equipment at all. A lot of people have just simply one set of equipment, you know, one reader and one set of antennas. Uh, so they want to know, well, how can I do a chip start and a manual finish? Or maybe you want to do a manual, uh, if you're doing one person at a time, it may be easier to manually put in their start time, uh, and then do a chip system at the finish line. So you can kind of set that up and forget about it. So, uh, we're going to cover that stuff today. I'll, I'll go over situations of what happens if your start and finish line is the same location. What happens if you have some races where some people are starting while other people are finishing that actually uh, yeah I have some users that requested that so I've added a new feature that handles that so all of those I'm gonna break them up into small videos hopefully it's not that long and uh, you can find the um, description of what you need based on your setup in the description below so uh, all right let's jump to it I'll show you the setup first of the bare bones equipment I've set up just for this demonstration Okay, for the setup, uh, I'm using, again, it's like almost 100 degrees outside here, so uh, very minimal setup. Try to set it up in the shade. Um, so uh, this will work for obviously a big setup. Um, I've got my laptop there. You want to have your reader always powered by a battery backup. That's a 650 watt or volt battery, ba battery backup, which means if my power goes out or wherever you're at to the finish line, it'll keep just the reader alone powered on for about three hours. So that's plenty of time for most races. Uh, you always want to have a battery backup. In fact, if every process you have, even you know timing and everything, have a backup system. So that's the power backup. Um, so I've got a TV here. This is totally optional. You can definitely have one at the starting line. The benefit with having a TV at the starting line, if you wanted to get you as a timer just verification that everything's reading fine. Now, there is a little activity indicator uh, that is flashing green the whole time tags being picked up. But maybe uh, you're starting one person at a time and you could have a race where maybe you start someone every 15 seconds. You don't care who starts when. It's just you want a 15 second gap. Uh, when a tag is red, what will happen is it'll, it'll now if it, now it looks like this tag isn't assigned to one of the software but uh if bib number 104 was assigned to someone it would show john doe started however long ago now I'm holding this tag out here so it's picking it up so you could have it to where the next person lines up let me go and switch tags and whenever maybe 15 seconds hit you send the next person on so here's this tag whenever 15 seconds hits i'm gonna scan the next person and there goes sonia green and so when she leaves of course it starts counting up so if you wanted to have a tv at the starting line this can give you a confirmation of when each person started and uh you know again if you want to gap people out or even teams out because uh, you can send a group off and it'll simply list the tag the last tag or the last person it picked up and how long ago it was they started so if your race uh or your state required that, you know, there's a 15 minute gap between teams or between waves or whatever, well then you can set up a TV. All it is is a, uh, this, now you can use any size TV. This is a 32 inch TV, probably buy them. I know you can buy them well over, well under a hundred dollars. Uh, and you can buy this tripod at Amazon. Uh, this is simply a 30 foot HDMI cable going to a laptop. That's all that is. Uh, this, in the software, there's a TV tab over here in the right side. Now it's not focusing, but hopefully you see it. TV tab, let me go and click on that. All you do is you click on this link that says show public display. That brings up a, a screen. You'll extend your desktop onto the TV because when you uh, hook it up with the HDMI cable, it'll give you the option to extend or to duplicate or whatever. You want to extend it and that'll allow you to drag that screen to where it's about. Let me go ahead and undrag it so you can see if I can find my mouse. Oh, I think I just closed the screen. So let me pull it back up. So whenever it comes up here, You'll drag it to where it's about 51% or most of the way over. Now you'll start seeing it show up here. But we, what you'll do is you'll double click on the Windows bar. You see my mouse? Double click anywhere there. 
and then it docks full screen. Okay. Um, uh, that is, let me show you the other thing with the chip start. So the beauty with the chip start is you can set this up. Now I went ahead and started a men's and a women's 5k together. You can do just one or both. But really, even if you're going to have JV boys, JV girls, and then varsity boys, varsity girls, you can have them all pulled up uh, at the same time, even though maybe you're going to start the other races later. doesn't matter. Even if, someone tag, if someone's tag is picked up while they're warming up, doesn't matter. Because this is simply storing the last time it saw that person and says, okay, that must have been the start time. So if, per if someone's warming up and they get picked up by accident, um, and then they're picked up later when they truly do start. Well, of course, it's going to remember their last scene time as here's your chip start time. So you can really set up the chip start system and just forget about it. Um, I say that, but of course, in, in reality, when you're at a race and you're the timer, you're probably running back and forth, checking everything out and, you know, whatever. But if someone's picked up, it doesn't matter um, if it's picked up too early. Uh, so what you do on the on this screen is that before you actually start the race, uh, and let me actually set these back to zero. So I'm pressing F2, that resets the race back to zero, clears at all times, all start times, everything. All right, so everything is, in fact, let's go back one more step. So you can open up any of the races that are occurring that day. Right now I've got the women's 5K open. Uh, you click on time race, and then it asks you which races do you want. Most of the time you're gonna pull all races in, even if you're gonna start the men's 5K after the last finisher of the women's is done. In most cases, you're still going to pull both in. And the reason why is because, now, let's imagine we're on the finish line computer. If I've only started uh, and I'm focused on the 5K for the women, let's say I check off only the 5K, and then I press the space bar. Well, now, only the women's race, you see it's in bold, only the women's race is, is going. So if a men's tag is picked up at the finish line, the software knows, hey, this belongs to a race that's not started, ignore it. Um, so that's one of the benefits with pulling all the races in. We're back on the starting line here. So before you actually start the clock, you're gonna check the box that says capture chip start times. Now when you do that, this box in here becomes enabled. Um, and this by default is checked. I can't imagine a reason why you wouldn't want it checked, but with every setting I have, I have the ability to turn it off just in case there's any problems. This other option, this is new, and this allows you to uh, assume, let's say this is only gonna be used, this auto finish gap. If your starting line and finish line are the exact same location, and you might have people finishing while others are starting, that's the only time that you'll use this feature. Now, if you click on this little help button over here, that's basically what this says, is that, now I'm not gonna have it up to where you can read it, you can read it yourself, but it basically says, only use this if you're finished and start or the same location, and you're gonna have people finishing while starting. And what this does is this, this allows the software to, uh, to where you can set up however many minutes is your assumed, uh, gap finish time and so what that means is if you set it up to say hey 10 minutes after someone's last seen time at the start assume that the next time i see them is a finish now of course any logical person is going to say well wait a minute what if john doe was warming up and he goes to the starting line to watch his friend start and then he shows back up 30 minutes later to you know at his scheduled start time and he starts the race well when he runs through because it picked him up earlier and you've got a 10 minute uh, auto finish gap it's going to show him as a finisher the moment he runs through well of course i thought of that and so if you delete someone's finishing time that shows up here and you have this capture chip start uh box checked the software is going to give you three options it's going to say hey would you like to convert this to a start time because i see you're deleting a finishing time when you're actually capturing starts and so um if you say yes to convert it of course it takes that finishing time it makes that that person start time if you hit no, it simply deletes that finishing time. If you hit cancel, uh, it will leave everything the way it was because you know, maybe you tried to delete it and wasn't sure what that box said and you hit cancel for some reason. So uh, anyways, that's the three options there. So we're going to go ahead and hit the space bar to start both races. We've got it capturing chip starts. So let me go and do start listening. All right, readers connected with only one antenna. So now our readers connected. Now if our tag is red, it will flash green, but nothing is happening because the race hasn't started yet. But again, you can do this 15, 20 minutes before the race starts. Go ahead and start the clock. Because all that matters is we're capturing people when they leave. So the gun time is irrelevant on the chip start computer when you're capturing chip starts. So let's go ahead and um, we'll just act like some people are starting now. Let's just take a few of these. And I'm just going to drop them. Now, I should have my TV up so we can actually see it, but I can see the green indicator flashing over there. 
All right, so there's those people have started. I'm gonna stick those in my back pocket. Now let's grab some more. I'll grab all the rest of them. And let me pull up the TV so you can actually see it as they start. Uh, TV, show public display. Let me drag it across. And let me turn it. All right, so hopefully we'll see these tags. All right, so there's that person. There's that one. I've got a bunch of tags in my hand, so I may be jumping around a bunch as it... Okay, 128. All participants, so all the tags I have, have started the race. Let me put all these in my back pocket. Now, for these testings, I'm using these old Tyvek tags I had years ago. These are my sample tags whenever I'm testing stuff out. Um, so, all right, so these participants have left. Now, how you can tell that, besides if you didn't have a TV screen, is if you look on the Athletes tab, you'll see... Uh, let me scroll down here in the men's race. The bib numbers I'm using are at the bottom. So you'll see a chip differential. Um, so that means that a minute and 48 seconds after the gun started, which of course if you started the race 30 minutes later, it would show a negative 28 minutes and something seconds or whatever. Um, and so basically that lets you get, gives you a visual confirmation of, okay, these are the chip start times I, I picked up. Now, if you're using dynamic bib assignment or uh, some way where you only get people that truly ran the race, then it's easy to see if you miss anybody because you can click on any of these columns, let's say chip differential, and it'll sort the values ascending or, ascending or descending. And so it's easy to see. It's like, wait a minute, I got some zero times here. So those are people that for some reason were missed or whatever, or didn't show up today or whatever. Um, but capturing chip starts, if you're doing small groups or especially one at a time, there shouldn't be a reason why you miss anyone unless someone just wore their tag wrong. Now, that's going the assumption that you set your antennas up in a decent way where it gets a good, good view of the tag. Um, okay, so what we've done so far is we've captured ship start times that are on, that's on that database. Uh, now, I was almost going to walk over to the finish line, but I forgot. Now, I can actually go through the finish line. Let's say those people finish right now, and I have not imported those ship start times because those ship start times are on this computer right now. But the way I've got the software set up, um, in fact, I may have to go to my finish line computer because I think my jump drive is over there. Yep. So the way what's going on, what's going on right now is those chip start times are being saved to the database, but the software will automatically push a copy of the database out to the backup path. Now, when you go to the settings screen of the software, you've got your your database path. This is what the software is using, saving you know in in real time. But you've also got this backup path down here. Now I've got it set to my jump drive. You can set it to wherever. This could be a network share path. It could be a Dropbox location, uh, or whatever. Uh, that way, you know, if it's if you can find a way to do it. To where you're not having to manually move a jump drive across that's you know some people prefer that but let me go get my jump drive because i've left it over there uh but you can have it to where the chip start computer is automatically copying a the data out to either uh, a shared location or to a jump drive so let me go and pull this out because what we're going to do is we're going to capture or, or copy those chip start values to this jump drive and you could do this periodically throughout the race. You don't have to uh, do this after everyone's left. Um, so let me go ahead and copy them over now. Plug it in. All right, so on the action keys. Now, if I had the jump drive plugged in earlier, this would have continuously be, uh, been copying the, uh, pushing a copy of the database out to the jump drive. So at any point on your starting line computer, you can just walk over, pull it out, Go plug it into your finish line computer, import the times, and then come back and plug it back in if you wanted to. So, um, you know, even it doesn't matter if it, like, if people are starting while you've got this pulled out, doesn't matter. Just keep, yeah, you know, let the let the chip start feature keep working. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I plugged it in, so I'm I'm gonna manually capture or click on this button that says Copy Database. Now, if you had activity going on in the screen, let's say chip reads occurring or whatever, it would automatically be pushing a copy out. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on copy database or you can press on the F7 key on your keyboard. So it copied that database out. It tells you it did it at five minutes and 18 seconds. You see the clock time here. So that lets you know the last time it pushed a uh, copy of the database out. So now all those chip start times that I captured are, are on the database file that's on the jump drive, okay? So and again, I'm doing this with the jump drive. You can also do it wirelessly if you had a LAN set up or whatever. So on my finish line computer, uh, I'm going to go ahead and import these chip start times. Now, again, if someone had already finished, you can import them after the finish. doesn't matter. All right, so in the RFID readers tab, at the very bottom, 
there's an option that says get my mouse down there uh, import ship start times capture remotely it's going to pull up the database uh, sorry just a windows browser window uh, thing and so i'm going to click on my computer i'm going to double click on the jump drive and i've got a bunch of files on there typically I don't have just one but uh, i'm going to double click on that database file now what's happening here is if your windows clocks or sorry if the race timing clock is the same you won't get this prompt as long as your windows times are the same so the day before the race you do want to make sure that your windows time is the same uh, that's an easy process to sync up you can go to control panel date and time settings internet time tab and then you know pick the time server make sure it's the same one on both of them and say update uh, i've got a video that covers that or just follow those instructions it's easy you know you can pull up control panel date and time settings uh, click on like setting or setup or whatever there's an internet tab option uh, and go through there but anyways just make sure your windows time is the same if it is um, and if the, if the race timing clock is the same let's say you, you use like a, a phone or a, a stopwatch to sync them up or let's say the start and finish line are close enough you can start both of them at the same time uh, what's happening here is the software says hey we detected a difference uh, in the start time based on your starting line computer and your finish line computer do you want to adjust the chip starts that you capture based on the difference of those times in most cases you're going to hit no so i'm going to hit no here and so now if i go over to my athlete tab you'll see that those chip start times which were all zeros should be here and they are okay so now if i were to take a tag read even though the clock shows 19 minutes i was able to grab a few here from my pocket let's just walk across the finish line okay so now you see that even though the clock shows 20 minutes, their chip time is actually six and seven minutes, okay? Now let me take a few more, walk across the finish line. Okay, so just throw those across and there's Brianna, Parker, Sonia. All right, and they should loop around after it gets done with this one and show people in finishing order. Now, by the way, if I had selected that this was a cross-country race, it would show their team name out beside their name. Okay, so now it's looping through the existing finishers because it's in green. So now let's scan the last few. Okay, and there goes all the rest of the finishers that we scanned earlier at the start. So you see the chip time down there. So that's basic. That's the basic process for capturing chips uh, at the start and the finish. The next video I'm going to show you how to uh, capture times manually if you didn't have any equipment at all because you might be a college or a, a high school coach where your meet is small enough where you just need a couple of laptops and someone at the start and someone at the finish. It's really easy uh, to do that. Um, but we'll go over all the different setups. Again, this was this the typical setup where you've got a start line reader and a finish line reader. Obviously, your starting line reader may be bigger than this, but to be honest, if you're doing one at a time, you only need one antenna. I mean, just make sure the tag is facing the antenna when they come through and you'll be fine. Um, but yeah, so that's the process for capturing chip starts. I'm trying to think if I left anything big out. The videos in the description below will go into different setups and yeah, more uh, your non-typical setups, which again, depending on the size of your meat, that may be what you need to do. So.